going to see about HIV and its replication cycle and drugs which are going to act on the replication cycle of HIV. HIV as we all know is the human immunodeficiency virus. So this virus causes deficiency of the immune system and affects humans. So that is why it is named as human immunodeficiency virus. So this causes a disease called acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. So this disease takes years to develop after the initial infection by HIV. So which group does this HIV fall into? There are two types of virus as we know which have a DNA genome and which have a RNA genome. We should know that HIV is a RNA virus. It is not just a RNA virus but it falls under the category of a retrovirus. So what does the word retro refer to? Retro means in the opposite direction. That is what retro refers to. So normally the central dogma of DNA as we know, the DNA is transcribed into RNA which is then translated into proteins. But here the reverse happens. The RNA is transcribed back into DNA with the help of an enzyme called reverse transcriptase. This reverse transcriptase is a unique enzyme belonging to HIV. So this helps in the re retrotranscription of the RNA into DNA. So this reverse transcriptase enzyme is present along with the HIV at times. So I am carrying this marker to write on the board. The same similar thing happens in the HIV. The reverse transcriptase is always present with the HIV. So where did this HIV originate from or where did this HIV come from? So we should first know that before going into its replication cycle. So there is a famous theory called Hunter's theory. Hunter's theory which tells us where did this HIV originate from. HIV was originally not found in humans, it was found in monkeys. So that is why this is called hunter's theory. So man as we know did not do jobs like the computer jobs or like a doctor at first. So he, the main occupation of a man was hunting. So during the course of hunting in Africa he used to hunt monkeys. So this monkey had a virus infection called simian immunodeficiency virus which had the structure similar to the HIV. So while hunting these monkeys they ingested its meat or the virus gained entry through wounds. So via these two routes this simian immunodeficiency virus it gained entry into the humans which later transformed it into HIV. So this is how HIV came into being that is from the monkey to human. So this theory is called Hunter's theory which is widely expected and you can write it during your examinations. So after seeing this we should know about the incidence of HIV. So what is the incidence? How many people does it affect everything we should know? The global statistics. The global report on HIV by UNAIDS suggests that there are around 36 million people right now in the world with HIV and out of that 2 million people die every year due to this disease. That is the burden of HIV we are looking at. So this is the global statistics which was released by UNAIDS in 2014. And after this we should know about the structure of the HIV. So the HIV consists of an outer lipid layer. So this lipid layer we should know that it steals from the host cell it infects. So the virus has an inherent property of stealing that is why it is called a virus. So this lipid layer is stole from the host cell. 
So it consists of transmembrane proteins called GP41 and it has attachment proteins anchored to it called GP120. Inside it, it has a matrix protein. So this M, remember it refers to matrix proteins. This matrix protein is also referred to as P7. Within the matrix protein, there is a nucleocapsid which is icosahedral. Icosahedral nucleocapsid. So this also consists of a protein called P24. This protein is important, I will tell you why. And it has single strands of exactly similar RNA and it consists of enzymes R, I and P. Remember this acronym RIP, rest in peace. So R it refers to reverse transcriptase, I refers to integrase and P refers to protease. Now we will see the function of all these proteins one by one from the outer to the inner side and how it infects the host cell. So first let's see about the host cell it is going to infect right HIV doesn't infect all the cells in our body so it infects mainly the cells called CD4 positive cells so these cells are responsible for giving immunity to the body the CD4 positive cells so what are the CD4 positive cells we know of the first cell is the T cell or the macrophage then there are variety of cells which are CD4 positive cells. Why are these cells called CD4 positive cells? Because they consist of a CD4 receptor. So these cells are called CD4 positive cells. The main examples are macrophages and T cells or dendritic cells. There are various other examples of CD4 positive cells. In this lecture, we will be seeing mainly about macrophages and T cells. So the HIV has a particular affinity for this CD4 cells. So if there are variety of cells in the body, so the HIV sees the CD4 cells and goes and tries to attack it. So they are having a great affinity towards the CD4 positive cells. This we should remember. So I will take two cells, CD4 positive cells for example in this lecture. So the first cell is a macrophage, macrophage and the other cell is a T cell. So these both as we know are CD4 positive cells that is they both have a CD4 receptor ok so now the outer protein or attachment protein as I said is the GP120 so why is it called attachment protein so the HIV has identified ok this is a CD4 cell is it it is a macrophage it is a T cell it has identified the host cell now this the function of GP120 comes in why is it called an attachment protein so for example if this is a GP120 so it will try and get attached to the CD4 cell so we need to know the structure of the GP120 first before studying its function so GP120 has two domains an inner domain and an outer domain the inner domain is attached to the GP41 and the outer domain has two binding sites one is the CD4 binding site and the other is the co-receptor binding site the outer domain also consists of various parts the two important parts we should remember are the v1 v2 stem and the v3 loop i'll tell you why 
so this is the structure of gp120 the gp120 consists of a inner domain that is at which is attached to the gp41 and an outer domain which has two binding sites the cd4 binding site and the core receptor binding site it also consists of the v1 v2 stem and v3 loop so now coming to this attachment again so the outer part has cd4 binding site and the core receptor binding site and the inner part or the inner domain is attached to the gp41 right so now there is exposure of the v3 loop at first which identifies okay whether this is a cd4 cell and it also identifies the core receptor the core receptor which is present in a macrophage is different and the core receptor which is present on the T cell is different. So we should know which core receptor is present on what cell to have a deeper understanding of what is going on in the replication cycle of HIV. So here in the macrophage you have a core receptor called CCR5. This is very important. Please remember the macrophage has a CCR5 core receptor whereas the T cell has a CXCR4 receptor. So this is the core receptor and this is the CD4 receptor which we should know. And the affinity of the cell uh, of the uh, HIV changes to the CCR5 and CXCR4. So the first V3, V3 exposure leads it to identify whether it is a CCR5 having cell or whether it is a CXCR having cell. So this property or this particular affinity for the cell to identify the core receptor and have particular affinity towards it is called a tropism. There are two types of tropism which we should know. First is the M tropism or the R5 tropism. Next is the tree tropism or the X4 tropism. So during early stages of infection, the HIV particularly has tropism towards the CCR5. That is, you have identified the HIV and then you have CCR5 tropism. But during later stages of infection, it changes to CXCR4 tropism. So first macrophages will be infected and then your T cells will be infected. This we should know that this is in present in the early stages of infection and this is present in late stages of infection and then dual tropism may be also involved the cells which can bind to CCR4 during later stages of infection can bind to the CXCR4 also so the importance of the V3 loop is the finding that it has tropism towards CCR5 or CXCR4 so now the GP120 gets attached to the CD4 receptor so this is the first step in attachment so this gp120 gets attached here so after attaching to the cd4 receptor a conformational change takes place in the cell so what happens is that it binds to the ccr5 also through the core receptor binding site so this is the first site where it binds to the cd4 then conformational change takes place and it also binds to the core receptor binding site hence the first step called attachment occurs so the cell is now attached to the macrophage so after attachment what happens is that fusion of the gp41 with a fusion protein present in macrophage takes place so this is called fusion first step was attachment and the second step is called fusion where the gp41 fuses with the fusion protein which is present in the macrophage so what happens in the gp41 is that the size of the pore increases when it attaches to the cell so what happens it transforms or here also conformational change takes place and it transforms into a six membrane helical structure helical structure so there is increase in pore size why should the pore size increase so if we have a door for example if the door is small the virus cannot enter into the host cell hence by forming a six membrane helical structure the pore size is increased and the virus can get a easy entry into the cells so this is the second step 
Now certain clinical points I would like to tell you. So the first group of drugs, think of a drug which can block the attachment of the virus to the CD4 itself. So this drug which blocks the attachment of the CD4 was not available earlier and now it is in phase 3 of clinical development. So this drug is called Ibalizumab. So this is the first drug which we should know which prevents the binding of the virus to the CD4 itself. Next is a CCR5 inhibitor. So we keep a drug here which doesn't allow the co-receptor binding site to get attached to the CCR5. So this is the second drug which is called which acts like a rock. Remember a rock. So Mara V rock or Vikri V rock. So these are a group of drugs called attachment inhibitors. So attachment inhibitors are your Maraviroc, Vicriviroc and Ibalizumab. Ibalizumab prevents the attachment of the virus to the CD4 binding site whereas Maraviroc and Vicriviroc prevents the binding of the virus to the CCR5 or the co-receptor binding site. So next drug is your fusion inhibitors. So this drug attaches to the GP41. So the exact site is the first heptad domain of the GP41 and it inhibits the fusion. So this drug is called Enfuvertide. This is called fusion inhibitors. So these are the clinical points which we know of. So we have a drug which can bind to the CD4 site and prevent the virus from getting attached to the CD4. This drug is called Ibalizumab. We have a drug which can bind to the CCR5 and uh, doesn't allow the virus to bind with the co-receptor binding site. So this is called Meraviroc or Vicriviroc. And the third drug which attaches to the heptad domain of the GP41 or the heptad repeat 1 of the GP41, this is called Enfuvertide. So these are some of the clinical points which we should know. The next, I would like to tell a fact about the HIV which we may not be knowing. So we should know that some people are particularly resistant to HIV or they have an immunity against HIV itself. Why? Because they have an inherent mutation of the CCR5. So 1% of the population belonging to Sweden, they have an inherent mutation of the CCR5 which makes them prone or which makes them immune to HIV. This is one fact which we should know about HIV. So this is the first step. So the virus has attached now and it has undergone fusion and we have developed drugs to inhibit such 